These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? Yeah, it's Grim Green back here today. This looks a little bit familiar. We're going to jump into a pods ranked. We're only here sort of towards the end of February. Maybe this will bleed into the beginning of March, but I'm trying to make pods ranked a little bit more regular. This like, you know, sick five to six months in between pods ranked just seems excessive. So we're doing a pods ranked. Let me pull every pod on my desk out here. <laughs> Too many. The usual routine of this is I'm going to explain what's leaving the desk and why, and then we're gonna kind of whittle it down to my top five. And I think, in fact, not think, I'm very confident that something today is going to the Hall of Fame. Wildly speculate for the rest of the video what could be going to the Hall of Fame, but there's a few things in here right now that aren't staying, that that are staying, they're not leaving, they haven't got reviews yet, but the, and that's why they're staying on the desk. The Nevox Phelan AX, I am smack dab in the middle of the review for this right now. Been good lord, good lord impressed. We are way over 500 puffs on that right now, and the flavor has literally not gone anywhere. The Crown X is also in the middle of a review, and if that is a good god for a mouth to lung, then this is a good god for a restricted lung. Uh, we're only rounding about 180 puffs on this, so plenty more miles to go with that. I think what happens at the beginning of every pod's ranked is gonna happen at the beginning of this pod's ranked. All, all the smock stuff is leaving. Every smock thing I've reviewed, it's leaving. The smock pods just do not hold up to heavy, heavy, intense use, which is a shame because this tiny square Novo battery is has been honestly one of my favorite batteries in recent memory. It's just unfortunately associated with a less than amazing pod. So those are gonna be leaving the desk. The Phelan A2 is also going to be leaving the desk. Uh, it just, you know, it's fine. It's one of those really fine things with the AX out and the A1 out. I kind of find myself either using the A1 or the AX now. And the A2, while it probably has its place, it's just not on my desk. I think the Vaporesso Lux X Pro is finally going to leave the desk. It had just been getting less and less and less and less use over the time. It's kind of just been sitting here. I grab it occasionally and use it. Every time I vaped it, every time I used it, I thought, yeah, this is great. This is just great and flavorful and I like it. I like the mouth to lung. I like the restricted lung. I like the battery life and overall I'm a big fan. Is something weird that happened though? Let me show you. You see that down there? You see that? That down there is liquid. Yeah, liquid inside. One of the tests that I put pods through, which is an easy test to do, and it started happening accidentally before I started like realizing it, calling it out, and that is to let the pod just sit. Just sit in its own muck and its own liquid and see if after a few days of just sitting and sitting and sitting, if I can pick it up and vape it without too much song and dance, without too much gurgliness, without too much weirdness going on. Some pods pass with flying colors. I'll just pick it up and it'll be smooth as it ever was. And some pods do not pass this test. And it appears that the Lux X Pro has not passed this test and has sat here with a pod full of liquid that eventually just emptied itself right into the battery. Granted, this was about a month of just sitting, and I don't think there's a lot of people out there that are going to let their Lux XR Pro just sit for that long and let the leak, the liquid sort of seep into the battery. This is a really good example of what not to do because now I'm kind of bummed that my Lux XR Max battery has liquid in it. It has not affected the performance or the functionality of it literally in any way. It's kind of just an eyesore. So the Lux XR Max is leaving. This, the Joytech Widewick, I never really talked about this. Uh, it's not gonna get a review. This was sent by a subscriber. It, I think it's gonna stick around on the desk. It's such just a weird pod. It's still vaping not bad. I only have one coil head left, so we'll see. These guys, the Lux Q2 and the Lux Q2 SE have stuck around on my desk for way longer than I thought they would. In fact, 
to this day right now, despite these have been sitting on my desk unused for probably three plus weeks, I know I can pick this up and it's going to vape great. Shit, that might be worthy to stick around on the desk. I think the SE is going to go away, but that Lux, not Lux, yeah, Lux, Lux Q2, this one's gonna stick around. Past the, the let it sit in its own muck test with flying colors. Never had even a gurgle on these pods. I think the Q2 pods are highly underrated. Shocked by that right now, actually. The Oxva stuff, look, the Oxva stuff is kind of just hanging on by a thread right now. Not a thread, but kind of hanging on by a thread right now. I much prefer the CRC pods with the spring-loaded crack to fill than any other Oxva pods. But I prefer the CRC pods in the little rocket ship square guy. This little combination is keeping an Oxva pod on my desk. Mm-hmm. Busting, busting. So I think the Oxva Slim battery and the Oxva that I got at Hall of Vape, those batteries are gonna go away. I think this Oxva battery is gonna go away as well. I'm only going to keep the square guy around and I'm only gonna keep the square guy, which is technically called the SQ Pro, by the way. Slim, SQ Pro, I call him square guy. But square guy with the CRC pod is definitely, definitely sticking around. Another pod that continues to pass my tests with flying colors is the Vupu Argus. Passed the tests pretty okay. It didn't do any real severe leaking or weeping, certainly no liquid into the battery. And when I pick it up after a while, I don't get a gurgle. I don't get a slurp. I kind of just get crispy flavor and that's impressive to me. I'm gonna keep this on the desk but just barely. I'm gonna dig out some new pods, see how that goes. The Geek Vape AQ got a pretty good review. And I still think that these pods are pretty top quality, but it is gonna be leaving the desk simply due to lack of use. When I come in here and I'm grabbing for pods, I've, I don't really grab for the Geek Vape AQ. Despite being in the Hall of Fame already, the Cross series from Vapresso is obviously gonna stay on my desk. I like the 0.9 ohm with the Cross Mini, and I love, 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 love the 0.7 cross pods in the Cross Pro or the Cross Max. What is this? The Cross Pro. Max, Pro, SE, QS, whatever. Big battery life, good size, good pod, good flavor. This will probably end up in the top five, not to give any spoilers away. Now real quickly, let me mention some disposables. I showed this disposable in the last pods ranked and literally everybody wants to know what it is and where it's from. It's from a company called Mosmo. That's literally all I can tell you. They're not good. They're not good. <laughs> They're honestly kind of bad, but these disposables are a little bit more about, you know, the hand feel than an actual like satisfying quality vape experience. The tobacco tastes like tobacco from like 2009. So it's kind of like musty, peanut shells or something, but that literally stays on the desk just for that reason. It's like for fun. Uh, in other disposable news, I don't really use disposables. They're generally just too high of nicotine for me. I don't have like a moral objection to disposables. I prefer pods. I re prefer less waste. I prefer things I can rebuild, but there are the occasional disposable that I leave on my desk and I jam on every once in a while. And it really takes a strong flavor, like a really, really good flavor to get me to use a disposable. This is, this is one of them. I talked about this in the last pods ranked. It's the Turk side piece spearmint. It's the first flavor I ever had. This is a clone of the first vape that I ever had back in 2009. It just floods me with so much nostalgia. I can't put it down. I mean, I can easily put it down and it stands up straight. Ooh, that 20 milligrams is a little too strong. We're really getting down to it here. There has not been a large influx of pods so far in, in this year, in the year of our Lord in 2024 yet. So the top five is probably gonna be real predictable, but let's do it anyway. Is it dumb to put something in the top five that I haven't reviewed yet? I don't care, I'm gonna do it. But what's gonna lead us into the top five is something's going to the Hall of Fame, but also I, I think it's time that I, 
personally am going to say maybe not goodbye forever, but goodbye for now to the to the smaller Cali burns, to like the, the A3S Cali burns, the smaller Cali burns, the littler pods, the littler batteries, the slender batteries. And it's not because they're not good. They're very, really, very good. It's because there's something better than that. And that's the, the G3 pods. After getting these G3 and GK3 pods, the other Cali burns have just just by just kind of sailed off into the distance. They just really don't get any use because I get the same high quality Caliburn vape from the G3 coil heads. I can't put two crosses in the top five. Oh, fuck it. I am cross up. Oh, no, sorry. This is editing guy and this is awkward, but I feel compelled to commandeer the rest of this pods ranked because that guy completely, completely botched the top five. Everything up until now been great. The top five, whoops, two crosses in the top five, get out of here. The actual true real top five is going to go like this. Five. Yes. The sense SVL. I love this thing. I can't get enough of this thing. It's a little sleeper. Like nobody knows about this. And it's one of like the best vaping cleanest pods I've used. So it's definitely top five material in the top five. Yes, yes. Oxva Slim SQ Pro with the CRC pod, that's gonna be number four. The Mighty Pure Max has fallen to number three for reasons I'll talk about in a second. Number two is going to be, it's the Cross Pro, baby. Just living that bullet train shaped life. Uh, I can't get over how much I like this. The 0.7 in the Cross Pro with the adjustable airflow and the bigger battery. Get out of here, this is everything. And now that the Cross Pro has a puff counter on it, I can confidently tell you that this 0.7 pod has just crossed the 3000 puff threshold. And it's going to the Hall of Fame for a reason. It's the Caliburn G3. This is like, you know, king of the pods. I know I talked a lot about this Pure Max and I am still gonna talk about this Pure Max, but for all of the reasons I mentioned and more, the Caliburn G3 all day long. I like the GK3. I like the small guy. I like the big guy. I like the screen. I like that it has a puff counter and these new pods. I've already said enough. I've already said enough. They're clean. They're flavorful. They're crispy. They are wicked long lasting. Caliburn G3. Now the Pure Max drama, the never ending, seemingly never ending Pure Max drama. Here's where I'm at. Here's why it's in number three, because this black battery with this little green drip tip and this first gen pod is my favorite. I get the best flavor from it. I get the most consistent vape from it and I get zero leaking from it. My silver battery completely dead and I have no idea why. Won't fire, won't charge, won't do anything. I have a pink battery and a second gen pod that slides open to fill it, except this isn't my favorite. It stays nice and clean. I just don't like filling it like this. I find it much messier. The squeegee effect of opening this, filling it and sliding this down to close it is very real and gets liquid everywhere constantly. And I really hope they don't stick with this filling method. And additionally, I have a third, second generation, new slide fill method pod set up as well that remains consistently messy and leaky. So that's where I'm at. It's kind of a mess, it's kind of a hodgepodge, but this vape is stellar, stellar, st stellar. Anyway, that's the Pure Max drama, that's the top five, that's the Caliburn G3 going to the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame has been updated. I'll put links in the description to literally every review I've done for these pods and any updates I've done for these pods, as well as the Vape Pod Hall of Fame, as well as the last pod ranking I did. And I cannot say this enough, but if you currently smoke tobacco cigarettes, it is time to switch. I believe in you. It's literally never been easier. There is a world of safer nicotine products out on the market. In the description of this video, there's gonna be some links to some science and some education. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay cigarette smoke free literally every single day. Not too bad for editing guy. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so. Boom, post credit scene. Eco Nano from Vaporesso. Where has it been? Why hasn't it been in the pods ranked? Well, I've slowly been vaping it and it's still vaping 
pretty great. It gets gurgly at this point, and I need to flick liquid out of it a lot at this point, but this is my only Eco Nano Pod at the moment, and I'm having a hard time getting more Eco Nano Pods. So when I get more Eco Nano Pods, it's gonna be back on the desk, and it will start competing you know, for a position in the top five. Now, this is really the end. This has really been a Grim Green video. Now let's stay cigarette smoke-free literally every single day.